Okay, so today in Science Mr. Robertson, we're talking about one of my favourite science subjects. We're talking about stars. And how stars are born and how they die. Without stars, there wouldn't be any other way of getting the energy we need in the universe. This is how a lot of the energy is actually produced. And it starts with little tiny pieces of space dust. Little tiny ones all scattered around. In space, it's a vacuum. There isn't anything there. So these tiny bits of dust are just floating around. But everything, no matter how big or how small, will feel the force of gravity. Everything will feel the force of gravity. It is gravity from the earth that is so big that no matter how hard I jump, that was a rubbish jump. But no matter how hard I jump, I will not be able to escape the Earth's gravity. It always pulls things together. And all of these bits of space just here would feel gravity and start to be pulled together. And these balls of dust and gas that start to come together are what we call step one the nebula and you can look for some amazing beautiful pictures of nebulas on google quite easily but then these bits here these balls of dust and gas get closer and closer together as they get closer and closer they start to hit off each other. The pressure gets harder. The temperature gets higher. And the actual bits of dust and gas are getting crushed so much they start to break down. There's so much pressure on them. But when you break them down they give out energy. It gives out the light and the star is then born. So when the star gets to actually be and give out light like our sun, it's on what we call its main sequence. The main sequence is when the, all that energy from being crushed is being given out as light, the light energy we can see, the heat we can feel. However, all of these here, they will eventually run out. They will eventually cannot be crushed no more. There will not be any left to crush. This cannot happen for infinity forever because there are not so many atoms and so many bits of space dust that we can actually do it forever. Eventually we will run out. When that happens, the star begins to die. When that happens, it's really sad. The stars get bigger and bigger and bigger because they're desperately trying to crush every last bit so they need even more temperature to get the final bits out it turns big and it turns red it's called a red giant and the red giant is what you'll happen when the star gets so big, this is a normal star, it 
it will get much bigger because it needs extra pressure to try and break down all the bits of dust and gas to get energy out. But even then, even this giant will have nothing left. And eventually at that point, the star will die. Our sun, the sun, is a really small star compared to others. It will get really big, so big that in a few billion years time, it might get even bigger than the Earth and might engulf and eat the Earth up. But that's a long way away. And after that, it will have no energy left and it will shrink. So when that star dies, it shrinks. It collapses. It goes to really small. Because there's no energy left to give out. So it becomes super, super small. And then our sun, for example, when it dies, it will glow a little bit of energy and then just stop and be this tiny, tiny dwarf star. So for our sun, it would end as a dwarf star. That's the smallest thing it can ever be, and that's the end of the sun's life. If it's a really, really big star, when it collapses, so much more energy that's going to collapse. And that collapsing star will cause a huge explosion just after. Star explosions are called supernova. Dying big star explosions. The biggest of the biggest of the biggest supernovas. Those of suns at least ten times the size of our sun, if not even bigger. They have a huge collapse. The pressure is so big when it collapses that instead of exploding you get to have what is called a black hole. With the black hole the pressure is so much all of those particles are crushed together and the force is so big the gravity is so strong light cannot escape and that of course is why it's called a black hole because all we can see is the light going towards it. We can't see any light or energy coming out. It's just taking more and more in. There's nothing to be too worried. The nearest black holes to us, we think, are at the middle of our galaxy, so a very, very long way away. But that, people, is how a star is born, with the gases and dust coming together, and then being pressed to give out energy but then when there's no more left it gets bigger to try and squeeze even more energy out the final bits but then eventually dies the small ones and the dwarf stars the big ones will explode and the biggest may become black holes a few new words to learn 
any questions, let me know. Good luck to you all. Thank you.